Welcome to The Open Book. We are from The Bookman and we've brought along with us one of our favorite people. Today we're going to share with Trisha McDonald, author and writer and publisher. And also along with me we have Ann Brueger and Jane Griffune and I'm Ellie Hulst. We'd like to just share a little time with Trisha and uh, talk about two of her special books because they're about someone special in her house, Sally, her dog. And the books are titled Life with Sally, Little White Dog Tales, Life with Sally, Still Spinning Tales. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how long you've been writing, Trisha? Well, I've been writing for a long time. I'm not one of those people that says, you know, I came out of the womb writing. <laughs> <laughs> but I've always had an interest in writing. And in high school and college, I was involved in writing. And about 10 years ago, decided I was really going to focus on writing. Okay. And started writing for the magazine about five month, or five years ago. Is that for the Cats and Dogs yeah, magazine? Yeah, for Cats and Dogs magazine. Um, my girlfriend actually started the magazine, okay. Janet Vormitag. And we would have breakfast together and talk about different things for the magazine. And one day she said, why don't you write a story every month about Sally, who is my um, white miniature bull terrier. Okay. Now, I love Sally. Mm -hmm. And But when she said that, I thought, who's going to care about a dog, a story yeah. about my dog? Right. But she encouraged me, so I, st so I wrote, started writing. And we were in about six months. And Janet was taking the magazines and delivering them, and all of a sudden people were saying, what's the story about Sally this month? Oh. I love the Sally stories. Sweet. So I kept writing, and then about three years in, two and a half years in, um, I put a book together, the first book, which is The Little White Dog Tales. Mm -hmm. My son kept saying, you need to put, you know, put a book out. And so I put that book out, and then in December of last year, the second book came out of Still Spinning Tales. Mm -hmm. I'm still surprised by how much people love to read the Sally stories. And when we go places, people recognize Sally. Oh, I, they sorry. recognize Sally, they don't recognize <laughs> me. Right. I'm only Sally's mom, yeah. but they definitely recognize Sally. We'll go in a place and people will be saying, is that Sally? I think that's Sally. Oh. You know, and so oh, we'll, I'll cute. say, yeah, this is Sally. And, and so it's been, a, it's been quite the journey with her, but it's been a lot of fun. Can you give an example of a story? Honestly, I'm not an animal lover, so I, I'm probably one of those who wouldn't necessarily <laughs> pick up a book about Sally, but animal lovers love Absolutely. stories about dogs and cats. I mean, at the bookstore, I can't believe if you put a nice little book with a picture of a dog on the front counter, people eat it up. Absolutely. But tell me a little bit about like one of the stories that you write. Well, all the stories are little snapshots. Okay. They're not big stories. And Sally and I will go, we go into elementary schools and junior highs, oh. and we talk to them about writing and about writing the seed story rather than the watermelon story. Okay. Schools use that mm -hmm. uh, differentiation. Oh, that's a cool idea. So the Sally stories will be one little thing that's happened. Uh, for instance, Sally, for a long time, her favorite toy was a six-foot garden rake. <laughs> okay, she's not playing with balls. She's not playing with, you know, ropes. She's okay. dragging around this rake. And so I wrote a story about, you know, her rake, and then in some other stories, the rake would come in. Well, at one point, she was having problems with her teeth, and I never knew that there were doggy dentists. Oh. I have never heard of a doggy dentist. They are out there, okay. and there's a wonderful a doggy dentist in Spring Lake. And so I took Sally to him, and he, they had to do some work on her teeth, and he said, no more rake. Oh. Okay, she can't have her rake anymore. Devastation. We went to, that later that year at Christmas, I took Sally into Muscle of Dogs in Grand Haven because they had Santa there for the dogs and cats. And I thought, this is a great story. Everything, when she does something now, it's like, oh, that's a story. Yeah. We were standing in the, in the shop there waiting for our turn, and I heard some ladies talking about, I think that's Sally, and maybe that's Sally. And so I said, yes, this is Sally. And the woman said to me, how is she doing now that she can't have her rake? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, I had never met her before, no. but she had been reading the stories, mm -hmm. and she you know, picked up on that, that story about the rake. Mm -hmm. So all the stories are little bits and pieces. Yeah. Oh, in the new book, she was staring at this butterfly bush, and I thought it was just adorable how she kept staring at this butterfly bush, and the butterflies kept getting closer and closer to her, and she was watching, and I was trying to get some good pictures, and just as one landed very close to her, and I was ready to snap the camera, she ate it. Oh! I know, this gorgeous <laughs> butterfly, and it lands there, and I'm thinking, this is going to be the best picture in the world, and all of a sudden, there's no butterfly there. 
Oh. And I'm like, oh my gosh, there's you know, surprise so ending. I'm, exactly. Yeah. So I'm getting her away from the bushes. We won't let her near the bushes anymore. But it's all those little things. It's mm -hmm. little things that happen mm -hmm. that happen with all pet owners, I think, mm -hmm. you know, to some degree or another. Maybe not all of them have a dog <laughs> that likes to, you know, yeah. garden rake, but they're little bits and pieces. And so pet owners can relate to them. I wrote a story about how she always comes in the bathroom with us. And so <laughs> when you're in the bathroom, she's always right there in front of you. And I hesitated on telling that story because right. I thought I'd sound like a crazy dog person, which <laughs> I am. But and I had more people comment on that story and tell me, you know, send me emails. Oh, my gosh, my dog does that. I never told anyone, but <laughs> yeah, my dog does secrets. that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, those are wonderful stories. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you um, used what you teach in writing t to write these books. What, what, a little bit about how you chose to publish them. What, how did that work? The books? Yes. Well, the books, like I said, my son kept saying, you need, you, know, you need to write these books. You need to get books out there. And I had the same feeling with the writing the articles of who cares, who's going to yeah. read these stories. When I started, to, I started looking around for how to, to publish these books. And there's several different ways of publishing. One is a traditional way where you're sending a query out to a publishing house or an agent mm -hmm. and trying to get their attention. I knew that this book was very, was just uh, in our area, mm -hmm. or I thought that it was going to be just, you know, West Michigan, mm -hmm. mostly Grand Haven, Muskegon. And so I started looking at, rather than traditional publishing, at self-publishing. I had no idea how to self-publish, but I thought, I'm going to do it. And so I jumped in, started putting it together, did some research, how to you know, lay it out for a printer, did some research on printers, and found a printer, and published it, and then started marketing it myself. It, surprisingly, I mean, we Sally's popular in Australia. We really? sell a lot of books in Australia. Who knew, oh. you know? <laughs> um, yeah, it's all, we just sold one of the Kindle books in Johannesburg. Mm -hmm. I, you know, got an email from a gentleman there saying I love oh, the book, cool. you know. Oh. Yeah, so Sally's <laughs> international, international dog. Really? And once I did that book, then when I work with clients as a writing coach, I help them write their books. They get done and they say, okay, now what? And it's so cool that they've finished their book. They put a lot of time into You both are writers. You know how much time you put into a book, writing and editing. And I felt a little dismayed at telling them that traditional publishing is is very, very difficult. Mm. Unless you've got a big name, you know, okay. unless you're a star or something, it's very, very difficult. And it can be discouraging. Mm -hmm. And then there's print on demand, but that's the writer's not making much money off that. Okay. And they're self-publishing, but writers don't usually want to learn that process, they want to write. And so that's when I started, I put together my publishing company, which is called Splattered Ink Press. Mm -hmm. um, because I thought, I've done this, I can help my so clients do that. Okay. And so we've been doing that now for about six months. Okay. And, uh, and that's going very, very well. And okay. it's just an alternative. Mm -hmm to um, publishing and how to mm -hmm. get your book out there. Self-publishing is changing so much. Yeah. It used to look like mimeographed you know, pages <laughs> with a horrible cover. Right. Nowadays, you can't tell the difference. If you work, go with a good you mm -hmm. know, publisher, right. a good self-publisher, right. you can't tell the difference. And I do remember um, thinking back to um, Polini, who wrote the book Aragon. I don't know if mm -hmm. you're familiar mm -hmm. with it. It's mm -hmm. a young adult mm -hmm. uh, fiction. People wrote, read it as a hand copied book and finally oh, really? somebody found this book so intriguing they said you know maybe somebody else can actually publish this yeah. i mean so he was 17 year old when he hand wrote the book it was copied finally someone did have an interest in it and mm -hmm. it obviously went from that hand copy to a complete book and you know with artists mm -hmm. and everything else but sometimes i think especially in our west michigan area we love to find out who is writing in our area, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, and how it will uh, connect with us. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and so we're, we're thrilled that you've also made a new avenue in which people could think about publishing a book. Thank One you. of the things that the Bookman seems to be really good about as well is supporting local yes. writers. Right. Absolutely. And, um, we do try to feature several local, we have a wonderful regional section, but also yeah. in fiction and short stories. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. And I'm, we do, I'm sorry, go ahead. We ha yeah, we, we've had many writers 
signings at the mm -hmm. store, which is just a wonderful way to have mm -hmm. your fans come in. And I know Trisha brought Sally to the bookstore, and that yeah. was a wonderful treat. Um, but I, I do think that's an important element in any small independent bookstore that they yeah. support their local writers and the bookman does a really very good job of that. And we have a lot of, lot of good uh, local writers, the yes. children's ones that are right. um, featured poets, in like open book yep. for and poetry mm -hmm. readings. Yep. And that's true. Yep. And, and it is, I have to say, when you know who the author is, even if you've only shake, shaken hands it's with them, fun. it makes that book so much more alive. You know? So there, that is really a cool thing about yeah. it. Yeah. I have a collection of books signed by the author. Oh, you really? I mean, it's That's just a little right. thing do. that I do. Uh -huh. I just love to, you know, if I, especially if it's a book I really like, or but even if it's a book I've never heard of, if I know that you know I'm going to meet the author, I'm like mm -hmm. I got to buy that book Meeting and have the, the author, author first, sign not it. Just buying an autograph. No, copy. no, no. Right. Right. Yes. right. And if they write Trisha in there, I'm like, oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 What are some of the biggest challenges you find? I know you've given us some ways to you know really open the door, but mm -hmm. for yourself, can you share some of those? Time. 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 It, you, I don't do a lot of writing anymore okay. because with the publishing business and get to getting that going and I'm working with other clients and so it, it's mostly time. I love to write and mm -hmm. thank goodness I have a deadline for the magazine <laughs> because I'm afraid that I wouldn't be writing at all. Okay. But I know that I have this deadline so I have to write the, the Sally story. Um, so it's, it's just carving out the time to do yeah. it, to sit down and actually write. That is such an issue for all of mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you say? Oh yes, definitely yes. the time. And I know we we all speak as if we are um, well honed in this writing process. But for me, that is the the consistency is the mm -hmm. the most difficult mm -hmm. part of it is writing every single day mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and making it a priority. Yes, yes. <laughs> no matter what. Yeah. It, mm -hmm. For me, right. it has to be a priority. I haven't had a devoted husband who loves to play tennis, so it's like. Go play tennis. <laughs> yes, and then you can write. Yeah. yeah. Yes. But it, it's a struggle, I think, for all writers. But um, yeah. it's important. You need mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. Well, Jane, one of the things that you've shared before, too, is the word solitude. And I hadn't really thought about the fact that it's, you know, what that means. It comes at a price. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It does mm -hmm. come at a price. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. But... Yeah. Because sometimes people could say, well, solitude... You know, yeah, everybody needs their space, but yeah, if you mean solitude as far as carving out time mm -hmm. from different things, that means some people aren't going to be able to be part of your life or some yeah. events can't mm -hmm. be part of it. Exactly. I, I guess mm -hmm. I hadn't thought of it yeah. as such a sacrifice mm -hmm. before, but I don't consider it, it a sacrifice, oh, but good. Good. It, I guess it is <laughs> In because a way. it's my choice, but that is a priority that I've made at the cost of some other things, or, you know, that mm -hmm. I. If I think about it, I think, yeah, well, okay, too bad. <laughs> I could ask this question of all of you since you're all writers, but what do you think is the most enjoyable thing about the writing process? We talked about challenges now. What's the enjoyable I, thing? I think the most enjoyable thing for me, I, I love feedback. <laughs> However, <laughs> I love uh, finishing something. <laughs> mm and getting to an end and and then actually be allowing myself to go back and reread mm -hmm. it and going wow mm -hmm. that was okay you mm -hmm. they, you did an okay job <laughs> and then like you wanted and uh sometimes it's just pushing the button to send it to someone oh. else mm -hmm. and just then waiting mm -hmm. to see what they say but um then I'm on to the next project. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't, there isn't a whole lot of that that, that occurs, but it's, it's part of the process that's fun. Mm -hmm. And I absolutely love reading, writing groups. I mm -hmm. absolutely love that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I would agree with Anne. For myself, I don't get pleasure of, out of writing so much. It's not writing. It's to have written something yes. when you're oh. finished. Okay. And you read it again, or you put it in the drawer for a week, and then you pull it out and you go, oh, this, I like this. I think I'm going <laughs> to keep it or uh -huh. not. You know, that's the pleasure that okay. I find, yeah. not the process so much as okay. the outcome. Okay. And I have, I, I'm writing stories about a couple, Joe and Maude. Mm -hmm. 
and I've been writing about them for years and they just kind of come in and out and for mm -hmm. me part of the process of writing that I enjoy so much is discovering things while I'm writing you know because I might sit down to write a specific story about Joe and Maud who are this lovely couple and they're so much fun and then it kind of takes off and I'm laughing while I'm <laughs> writing <laughs> because I'm seeing them doing this or I'm seeing them doing that and they're re interacting with each other or if I'm writing a Sally story, you know, I might start out writing about this, but all of a sudden, actually, it was about this. And if I allow myself to kind of go with where that's going, it's it's a nice little discovery. And it's, it's so I enjoy that part of the the writing process the is like figuring it out. Yeah, the absolute creativity is so much fun. And then, like you both say, it said to have that done and read it and go, wow, that that's kind of cool. That's yeah. kind of fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've heard people say, um, well. I really didn't want to write that so much, but there was something in me that mm -hmm. I had to write that. And I, I guess I, is that sort of what you're mm -hmm. talking about right here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think so. Especially with that couple. They're crazy. <laughs> They're crazy fun, <laughs> you know? So I always love to sit down and, and write about them. I belong to a group, Peninsula Writers, which is a Michigan-based yeah. group. And we go um, in the summer spring and fall we go up north and uh, for a in the summer it's for a week-long retreat oh, wow. and I brought Joe and Maude with me so much that everyone there knows and so when I'm there they'll say hey I thought of a good story oh. for Joe and Maude it's like you know they're real people they're not this you know written in a book they're mm -hmm. like real people mm -hmm. you know has Joe has Joe ever done this and boy Maude would get really upset if he did that so that's kind of fun too mm -hmm. seeing those characters that mm -hmm. you're developing mm -hmm. you know turn into people right well I don't know if you've experienced this but um, the pleasure of writing might be one thing, but to me, I'm not happy if I don't write. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's oh, that exactly goes the same with thing, but I get grouchy or yeah. ornery if I'm not happy. <laughs> um, so I, I need to write in order to be happy. Yeah. And it's <laughs> true. No, it's, no, true. it's, it's true. true. It's mm -hmm. not a nine to five. Uh, I mean, I don't commitment. have to, but, but I, that's what I want. Yeah. So right. that gives me the pleasure. That's yeah. It's, it's a, it has become a responsibility to myself to um, write al mm -hmm. almost as much as, you know, a, a real job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a paying <And> job. A <laughs> paying <laughs> job, right. Okay. It is my job to write. Yes. Mm -hmm. It is my occupation and job yes. to write. I don't yeah. get paid for it right. as much <laughs> as I do my other but job. But I don't know how to quit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, that's a good and thing. I don't. I, I often think um, I was listening to NPR one day when, and they were talking about artists um, per se as as to what kind of um, medium they use and whatnot. And the artist they were interviewing was saying, "Well, I could, I could draw on a paper plate if I had to." <laughs> and I thought, "Yes, if yeah. I um, if I have an idea." Um, if I'm working at the bookstore, I'll, fortunately we have lots of scrap paper around, <laughs> I'll write something on, on a piece of paper and stick it in my purse. I may not find it for another six weeks, but yeah. um, I'm always writing in my mind. I'm yeah. always capturing ideas out of the air and in conversations mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, that, there's part of that that makes you look a little bit weird sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but she talked about um, thinking of yourself now as a writer, mm -hmm. yeah. calling mm -hmm. yourself a writer. I more recently tried to think of myself as an artist. I mean, writing is an mm -hmm. art. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I try not to get too discouraged or focus always too much on the marketing of mm -hmm. my writing. It, mm -hmm. I don't like to write as this material is a commodity. I, mm -hmm. I, you know, maybe it's too grandiose, but mm -hmm. I like to think of my writing as a process of mm -hmm. creativity mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. art. Mm -hmm. And that's not always the case. It depends on the project, but... Um, no, that's, that is very well stated, very mm -hmm. well stated. Um, yeah, I think that's important to not interfere with some creative writing if you're thinking about the market. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe that takes the word creative out of it. Well, it takes the pleasure yeah. out of it for me, and maybe not for others. Yeah. But. Mm -hmm. Do you have, I know you've already given much advice, but do you have any special advice you'd give to writers? And, and each of you could respond to that, perhaps. Mm, just one thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, 
Well, I think it's important that if you're a writer to call yourself a writer, to okay. admit that you're a writer or an artist, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and probably, I guess the biggest thing would be to get rid of those gremlins oh. or to work with those gremlins, yeah. you know, those things that tell you that you can't do it, um, that you're not good enough or mm -hmm. you, you know, whatever they're saying to you that are negative thoughts, to learn how to control those and get rid of them so that you can move forward with, sure. you know, if that's your passion or exactly. if there's a certain project that you want to work on or whatever to, to kind of work with those those gremlins so that you can move forward. Great. And I would I uh, would say start start, mm -hmm. start <laughs> quit whining and start, start writing. writing. <laughs> writing. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I would say you know start with the smallest little picture frame or a little sketch that you can. Um, don't make it too big because that can be overwhelming, but um, just start. Um, start. Mm -hmm. yeah. start. And there good. certainly are many books that can inspire you. Mm -hmm. There are uh, periodicals that are phenomenal that will give you um, mm -hmm. prompts and um, read, read what you would like to write, I think is an important okay. thing. All right. I Can agree. you top that? <laughs> no, I cannot. Um, read, 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 yeah. and um, mm -hmm. put yourself in a position, turn on the computer, or grab a pencil, mm -hmm. yeah. and do mm -hmm. it. And get going. Stop mm -hmm. whining and just okay. do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Uh, this has been so delightful, whether it was about writing process, whether it was about Sally. Mm -hmm. We thank you so much for sharing with us today, Tricia. We appreciate the fact that you've mm -hmm. come down and we could do that. We thank you, Muskegon Community College, for allowing us the, the open book program. And we'll be right back with a few extra special picks that we'd like to share with you. Hi, I'm Trisha McDonald. And if you are an aspiring writer or someone that wants to write, I have a great book for you. This book is called Quit Whining, Start Writing. And yes, it is my book. However, I still think it's a great book for anyone who wants to know the details of writing in a fun way of finding out how to get started, how to keep going, what to do when you get to characters and plot and all that fun stuff that's involved in writing a book. Quit, whit quit whining, start writing is the name of the book. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ann Brueger and I'm a bookseller at the Bookman in Grand Haven. And uh, I would like to introduce uh, one of the books that will be coming out in our store in August. It's called The Light Between Oceans. It's by M.L. Stedman. It is a wonderful debut novel. This is the first novel for this author. Uh, it takes place in Australia about 100 years ago. It uh, focuses uh, on two characters specifically, Thomas Janus, who is uh, returning home to his small hometown after four years on the Western Front during World War I. He marries Isabel, and they become lighthouse keepers uh, quite a ways away from offshore. And the story focuses on their finding a child who has, uh, a boat has crashed on the island, and the father in the boat has died, and there is a baby who remains. And they make a choice. Uh, that is very difficult to keep this child, but uh, the story is uh, complex because these people have made a decision that is something that bothers them morally, but it is a conflict with the desires of their heart. And the remaining part of the book is about this. And it's just, it's very beautifully written, well written, and I highly recommend it. Another book that will be coming out in our store in August is City of Women. And for those of you who love to read World War II stories, this is fantastic. It is a little bit on the dark side. It isn't anything that you can't, um, it isn't Holocaust based, but it's, it's about the little known um, life that women led in the city of war-torn Berlin, and it focused ex in, uh, explicitly on one woman, Sigrid, who uh, becomes, her life becomes complicated being part of 
a solution and um, part of a romance with someone. And so there's both romance and intrigue in this novel. And uh, again, this is a debut author, uh, David Gilman, and it is excellent. Thank you very much.